Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome to Cafe Diem. More specifically than that, welcome to the comedy night that is happening right now. There is a stand-up comedy event happening right now in your face. Um, I'm not the host. Uh, I just run the show. My name is Bill Metzger. Hello. Uh, I thank you. <laughs> Um, Ray, uh, I would like to point out that Cafe Diem is on Facebook, and I do invite people to this show, so, uh, if you would like to see an invite come your way, just like, find, search Cafe Diem Comedy, uh, specifically Cafe Diem Comedy Night, on Facebook, like the page, I'll get at you, bro. Um, so, uh, without further ado, we want to start this show off with a bang. I want to bring your host up here. He's a very funny guy. He performs all over Richmond. Please welcome Clay Schoff to the stage. What's up, Cafe Diem? All right, I want to get a few things out of the way first. Everyone, pay attention to this statement. If you don't like something that you see on stage, do not boo, do not heckle. Just shut the fuck up. Your silence will kill us and let us know that we're doing terribly. Anything other than that, you might accidentally be dealing with a professional comedian and they will tear into you like no other. So don't set yourself up for that. Just shut the fuck up. That being said, where are my nerds at? Good. I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, I want to talk about nerds for a second. Specifically, the ones who play those fantasy games, and they know all sorts of ridiculous facts and statistics about stuff that they'll never get to do in real life. You know the ones that I'm talking about, right? Sports fans. That's right, you nerds and your fantasy sports. See, you're just like the Dungeons and Dragons kids. The only difference is they actually have storylines and character development. For me, watching sports is like listening to Who Let the Dogs Out. Everyone seems really excited, I just can't figure out why. <sighs> I mean, just, just because what you're into is popular doesn't mean that you're not a nerd. We're all nerdy about different things. There's nerds everywhere. Another group that you wouldn't think of is, is the car audio nerds who want to tell you all about their sound system. Like, no, 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 dog, but check it out, check it out. You feel that bass? You feel that? That shit sounds nice. You gotta admit, that shit sounds nice. No, asshole. It doesn't sound like anything. It feels like I'm having a goddamn panic attack. <laughs> Turn this shit off. Gonna end up killing yourself. Speaking of which, uh, if you are planning on killing yourself, when you write your suicide note, don't fill it with the same trite bullshit as everyone else. Oh, I can't live without her. I'll never get out of this debt. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, come on. This is your last chance to make an impact on the world. Shake things up. Blame some kid from your seventh grade English class. Or, or here's a good one. Make a suit out of aluminum foil. Wear it when you off yourself, and leave a note on your chest saying that you had to kill your future self, and you're now in hiding, because you're the only one that can stop the incident. <laughs> that shit will have your family guessing for months. Just gotta shake things up, man. That's, that's all I'm saying. Life is boring. You gotta do what you can to bring some spice into the world. Apparently there's a new bumper sticker going around. Uh, it says, uh, I'm straight, but not narrow. Which basically means, yeah, I'm pretty progressive and forward thinking. Uh, I emphasize with the gay struggle. I believe in equal rights, but I don't want to put one of those equal stickers on the back of my car, because then people might think I'm a faggot. That being said, uh, let me welcome to the stage your first comic. I do not know this person, so I have nothing to say, but welcome to the stage, Greg something, I forgot. Brom! Brom! Greg Brom! Hi, 
everybody. I'm Greg Robb. Can you hear me? Is this, close? Is this too close to my... Okay. Um, uh, first thing. I'm just going to start my first joke, but I don't know how to... Uh, uh, you know when you're out, you know when you're outside of 7-Eleven and your, your friend hands you a dog leash and uh, goes inside, like surprisingly just hands you a dog leash and then goes inside for a beer to get beer and uh, you're left out there just standing there. All of a sudden you feel like the world's spinning around you and everyone's like just staring at you and you don't know what to say. Like uh, like uh, someone's come up and start talking to the dog and be like, oh he's so cute. Oh my God, what's, what's your name? And I'm staring, I feel like I'm not part of the conversation yet. But, what's your name? I'm like, oh, the, the name is, I don't have the real dog in mind, but and then, uh, and then I tell them the name, and then, uh, and then, uh, wow, I thought, see, I thought this was a joke earlier, and now you're, now I, I, it's completely falling apart. I'm gonna just stop that one, and, uh, start, I've never done this before, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, um, <laughs> wow, um, let's see, uh, what was the other thing? Hey, have you ever noticed how white people are really bad at basketball? And black people are really bad at avoiding discrimination. <sighs> um, okay. Um, um, I tried lifting weights for the first time the other day. Not like at the gym or anything, but I went to, uh, my roommate had a couple of these things on the floor. So I just picked them up and I started lifting them. And, uh, like, I did it, I don't know, like, a couple of, I did this for a couple minutes and after like uh, a while I felt like my, like my arms felt like it doubled in size which is see how huge it doubled in size and it felt like like blood was rushing to my arm like it felt like my arm had an erection almost and uh, and uh, I started it started to hurt because I've never done it before I started rubbing my arm and I, for just a second there I started to feel kind of gay because I've never masturbated a foreign erection before. And, uh, I, but I think at the same time, I, I understand why the, like, you, my bro friends, he goes to the gym and he's rubbing his arm erection, looking around. He's proud of himself because he just worked out and did a bunch of cool lifted weights and he sees all the other guys and they're all looking at him rubbing their erections and they're all just looking at it. I could see where the confusion would come in for those people. Um, yeah, I don't have anything. Oh, and I, there was more, and then, uh, so, no, 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 so I'm talking about that thing still. Uh, I was, uh, sorry, where was I? This is a disaster. A disaster, if you didn't hear me. I had it kind of away from my face for a second there. Um, so then I, so then I was sitting there, and then I started doing the, uh, kind of just started to put the weights down. I started doing the stone robot thing, and uh, my arms were coming up really fast. Like, you know, when they, the on deck circle, the guys put the weights on their bat so they could swing faster. I felt like my arms were just incredibly fast, and they moved faster because of the weights that were in them a couple seconds ago. So I'm pacing around my living room and just doing this. I did it for like 10 minutes, I think. I don't know how long I was doing. And then my roommate went, stop, what the fuck are you doing? Just sit down, and then I stopped. Thank you. Greg, 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 Greg. Was that, was that your first time? Yeah. Great job. So it's Greg Rom, everybody. Nothing more to say about that. Uh, so. Welcome to the stage, your next comic, Matt Eisenberg. Yeah. Hello. 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 Do you guys know what a Lollapalooza is? Yeah. Yeah, so it's a music festival in Chicago. And it just happened last week, I think. Maybe yeah. two weeks. Okay. Someone reads Pitchfork. You must be cool. If you're single, ladies, you should date him. He's deep. He's deep, I swear to God. Um, no, but in Chicago, there's this music festival called La Palooza, and they just got hit by this massive storm during it. They had to evacuate, and they had to redo all these sets times, and they started getting really strict about it. And there's this dubstep DJ kind of guy, and he's called uh, DJ Cascade, I think. And anyways, he was like getting close to the end of his time, and they were like be building up the bees, like... And everyone's like, it's about to break, it's about to break. And it goes quiet, and everyone goes, <gasps> and then everyone goes, 
oh, because they cut them off right before the beat drop. And I was like, oh, that is the greatest metaphor for dubstep there will ever be. <laughs> I, I have little faith for dubstep. Anyways, I, uh, I spent my summer in Colorado doing like an internship, and I just flew back a few days ago. And on the way there, I... I missed my flight, and so I had four hours to kill in a bar. And so I was just sitting there drinking, and I eventually, and I got in there, and I was like really sad because I missed my flight. And this lady was like, "Oh, what happened to you?" I was like, "I missed my flight," and she's like, "Oh, that sucks." I hear Ranger has the most alcohol content at this bar for a beer. I'm like, "That sounds like a great idea." So I start drinking. I just get to know this woman, and we uh, we're talking about like books and stuff because apparently she studied to be an English teacher. And then she, uh, for some reason, we get on the topic of philosophy, and it turns out I'm sitting next to a Korean veteran and a Vietnam veteran, and we get to talking about it, and for some reason, uh, we get on the topic of, like, terrorism and everything, and he's like, uh, oh, if it was up to me, I wouldn't have let any uh, Arabs into this country after 9-11, and I was like, you know, not all... Arabs and uh, Muslims and terrorists are all in different groups. Like, it's like a Venn diagram. He's like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> and so I was like, all right. And so I, like, have the bartender bring me over a, a napkin. And, like, I draw the Venn diagram out, and he's like, oh, this is bogus. <laughs> all right. But anyway, it, like, started to get out of control. And then eventually we noticed at the end of the bar... There's a girl from one of the Pawn, like, reality show things. And uh, he was like, oh, I think that lady's on TV. You should go talk to her. And I went to go talk to her. And I was, <laughs> and I was like, are you on TV? And she's like, yeah, I'm on a Pawn series. And then uh, the guy to the left of me, I was wearing a Wilco shirt at the time. And he goes, is that a Wilco shirt? And I go, you're on a reality series? Fuck you, Wilco! <laughs> she... <laughs> She was not amused. But I feel like those guys are about to go the way of these cake shows where they get really popular and then they all like quit them. So like on my way out, I was like, you should make good investments. <laughs> and then, uh, so my flight is coming up and the woman sitting to the left of me, she's like, oh, you're so smart and you de defended like Arabs and all that stuff, that's so cool. Do you mind if I, do you want me to pay for your drinks? I can tell you're a college kid. And I was like, Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. And she's like, oh yeah, what's your uh, email like, to keep in touch with you? And my name is Matthew Thomas Eisenberg, and so my email is MT Eisenberg. And I was like, oh shit, I don't want to be in contact with this woman. And so I said, <laughs> my uh, email is MR Smith, because my name is Matt Ryan Smith. And she goes, oh, you're the first person to get uh, Mr. Smith at Gmail? And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, I really like The Matrix. <laughs> She's like, oh, that's so cool. So do I. Well, I'll see you later. And my favorite part about this is that I had previously started a tab with the bartender, Ken. Ken knew my last name was not Smith. So it was just Mr. Smith and Ken is just sitting there <laughs> judging me. But anyways, uh, that might be the ending of that story. And I think it is. So anyways, I've been Matt Eisenberg. I'm going to go be someone else right now. <laughs> Matt Eisenberg, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah! Yeah! A lot of times, uh, people worry about sitting up front at comedy shows because they're worried about being called out this next man, it doesn't matter where you sit, no one is safe. Brace yourself for the hilarious Ray Bullock!